McHaver boys. CMCers. Barters. Spudents. Scripsies. McHaver girls. Spotties. McHaver dudes. Mudders. McHaver bros. The semiotic landscape of college campuses is made up of the sights and sounds that surround and are created by a diverse group of students, faculty, and staff. Although college community members may differ by region, class, race, gender, politics, or religion, the vast majority of students come together to develop a shared campus identity, which is largely defined linguistically. Our project will explore the different identities that are created at a variety of schools based on their size, type, and location. One prominent example of lexical items specific to college speech communities are the labels used by students to identify both themselves and students at other campuses, as shown in the previous clips. Some of these, such as Swatties, Martyrs, and Fords, are genuine self-identifiers used by students and faculty alike. Other times, however, these labels are used ironically by the student body. Is there a word that people on your campus use to define themselves? Yes, uh, our word is walks. Okay. And is that a word that is a student-based word, or does that come from the administration? No, it comes from the administration, and the students use it ironically because we all think that it's really not the best campaign. At our school, we have like very specific terms for what we call ourselves. Like we call ourselves Swatties since I go to Swarthmore. Okay. Um, does your school have anything like that? Like what the students, as a student body, call themselves, or like oh. individual students? Very good question. There was like a running joke that we're called like students. SPU. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not very like commonly used, but like uh -huh. we joke about it. But I don't think we really have a big like swatty like mm -hmm. nothing like that. Gotcha. An important feature of developing identity on college campuses is the acknowledgement of the existence of nearby or even rival colleges. For example, I grew up a block away from the University of Kentucky, and I know that every student there is indoctrinated to despise two schools, the University of Louisville, their in-state rival, and Duke, their basketball arch nemesis. Other schools, especially ones in close proximity to other colleges, may use the presence of nearby colleges to help bind their student body closer together, creating a sort of in-group around their college campus. This can be intentional, like the way that UK basketball rivalries are spread around campus, or more organic developments that come from the students themselves. One way that this can occur is linguistically, through the labeling and stereotyping of other students. For example, my friend Lucy Whitman Sandmeyer is a freshman at Pomona College, which is one of the five Claremont colleges whose campuses all occupy the same relatively small area. Because of their extreme proximity to one another, there are a series of labels and stereotypes that are attributed to students at each college. Harvey Mudd is the, the most um, science is the most STEM related uh -huh. so and their curriculum is known for being just like incredibly hard so, so they're known as like definitely like more like shut-ins nerds nerdier less yeah. social part of the campus yeah. scripts and pitzer are both very social actively active um okay. socially active scripts especially in regards to i would say gender and race uh -huh. Pitzer, especially in regards to society and, and environment. Pomona, I think the people that I've talked to from other campuses have said that the stereotype is more like elitist, like, oh, we go to the best of the five C's. But everyone at Pomona is like, that's not true, we're inclusive. This concept can also be seen in schools that are farther apart, but are still in the same region, such as Seattle Pacific University and the University of Washington. You dub kids, typically you're going to find like cream of the crop students, like very smart, very intelligent because it's such a high like rated school. Mm -hmm. While some of these stereotypes are positive or neutral, others turn negative, especially as they relate to images of bros, frat boys, and conservative business students. These students are identified not only linguistically, but also by their appearance and clothing. Um, so the co-gods are like the Slytherins of AU. Co-gods? Co-god co is the business school. Oh, okay. Um, they're the only school without an acronym. Okay. And so they're like the Slytherins of AU. CMC is has a really good like business and politics program and they they have like a very conservative vibe compared okay. to the other campuses. Uh -huh. They're known more as like frat boy, like partying okay. type. If you were to see, say, a guy walking wearing fairies, pastel shorts, and like a polo shirt. Absolutely, you're like, that guy is CMC. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, you can go to parties and be like, oh, do you go to CMC? And like... Usually just call Haver Bros Haver Bros, but... Haver Bros? Yeah, that's a thing, oh. but um, <laughs> that's, it tends to have a negative connotation. Uh -huh. um, so 
I'm a little curious about the Tavern Bros. Like, do you know what kind of image that is? Is it just like a bro image? Like, <laughs> yes. Um, so, there's this kind of stare. It's your typical, like, if you look at bros, like, I lift man kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. That would be like a Haver bro. So it's like a Haverford student, usually male, who likes to lift okay. or like your tip, that kind of image. Gotcha. Um, though sometimes we'll extend that to like anything that's someone who typically wants to like mansplain you, mm -hmm. um, so whether that be athletics or even classroom settings. I think I've sometimes seen it used there, but we, we still love our Haverford students. <laughs> Our results have demonstrated that language plays an essential role in the creation of group identities on college campuses, and that the specifics of language use, especially labeling, vary based mostly on the type and the size of the college and in its proximity to another school. Pomona, Haverford, and Bryn Mawr, which are each no more than 10 minutes away from at least one other school, each have common lexical items primarily to define students of nearby schools, while American University, Seattle Pacific University, and Swarthmore each have lexical items that are more internally focused than externally focused.